Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in to Good Government with Michelle Dubois. I'm your state representative, Michelle Dubois, for the 10th Plymouth District, which is Brockton, West Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater. And I'm here today to talk about the Yes on One campaign, which is one of the ballot questions on November 6th. Uh, last month, I had some guests in for question three, which is I. Uh, on yes on three, I'm um, yes on all three questions just to, and just to let it out there. But I thought this yes on one campaign is very confusing and the question gets some people confused. And so I wanted to invite an expert today to give a little background and discuss it with all of you. And I'm happy to welcome Linda Condon, who is a nurse of 36 years, yes. which means you've cared for a lot of people in a lot of ways I couldn't even handle. So thank you for your service to our community and to people in general. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the question one and how it came about and maybe a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm a resident of the city of Brockton, have been my entire life. Um, I've been a nurse for 36 years, uh, graduated from what is now UMass Dartmouth mm -hmm. uh, back in 82. Um, I've worked at uh, several different hospitals and for the past 33 years I've worked in the emergency department. Oh, wow. So that's my specialty is ER nursing. Um, I've that's been, serious. Yes. 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 You see everything there. Um, I have been involved with my professional association, the Massachusetts Nurses Association, um, for almost all of those 36 years uh, with a great group of nurses to work with. So I am a bedside, what they call a bedside nurse. I actually take care of patients mm -hmm. versus nurse managers, nurse administrators, just different um, types of nurses. So the Yes on One campaign, um, which is for question one, um, actually, we have been working on trying to get safe patient limits for over 20 years. Really? Um, this has been an ongoing uh, fight, a battle by the nurses. Uh, this petition, it's a citizen's petition is what a ballot question is. Um, some people get confused about that. They think this is the government putting these forward. Right. It's not. It's the exact opposite. It's the citizens who have decided that something needs to be addressed. It's not being addressed by the government. So we are going to address it. So you collected signatures? So we had to collect well over 100,000 signatures wow. um, evenly across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, submit them, submit the question. It has to pass constitutional muster. It can't the violate AG's office, right? The AG's office. It can't violate the um, Constitution of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Um, and then after that goes through and approved, then you have to collect another grouping of signatures after that. That and aren't then, the same. That aren't the same. They've got to be completely different people, and they all have to be verified through their towns and cities. And then the question can go on to the ballot. I love nurses. You guys are tenacious. <laughs> I say, good for you. So we've been at this for 20 years because our number one prime concern is our patients and taking care of them and giving them good care. And good care you have to be able to be at that bedside. Right. And what happens, unfortunately, now in healthcare, it's been turned into a business. Um, hospital executives are making choices what to do with the money, and the choices are not to put it back into patient care. Right. Um, their choices are to put it into CEO salaries and to put it into building big administrative buildings and to put it, unfortunately, into bank accounts in the Cayman Islands. Which is well, another yeah, whole question. I don't even know about that one, so that's what I'm interested well, in. Well, that's another whole question is why is this money not going into banks in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts right. in order to invest in our economy? Right. That's I'm another learning whole a lot. point yeah. um, to get into. But our thing is that this money should be going back into patient care. So what's happening now is nurses are expected to take care of way too many patients at one time, and it's impossible. I don't know about other people, but I cannot be in three different rooms at the exact same moment in time. Right. So when they give a nurse too many patients, you then have to prioritize and you have to make choices. And it all depends on how sick each one of your patient is. Right. The sicker the patient, the more time you need with them, mm -hmm. which means less time with the other patients. Right. So what we find is they're not getting the quality care they should. Um, medical errors are being made. Patients are being discharged from the hospital too early. Oh my gosh, I get complaints about that all the time. Without the correct discharge planning, without the education they oh need gosh. from their nurses, so then they get readmitted. Uh, readmission rates are high. Right. And some people aren't aware that patients who are on Medicare, if they get readmitted to a hospital within 30 days of their discharge, then that bill goes to the hospital. Medicare doesn't pay for it. Wow. So that drives up the costs of health care. Huh. So we have been battling 
to try to reduce the number of patients each nurse is responsible for. So what the question does is it puts a maximum number of patients a nurse can have. That doesn't mean she can't have fewer if her patients are really sick and she needs to be having less patients that still can be adjusted. So right now there are limits for the ICU, right? Or I'm, is, I'm saying these words, yeah. I don't know 100%. The intensive care unit is the only um, unit that has limits by law right now. Um, and it's a one-to-one -one unless the nurse. Oh, one-to-one. One-to-none, one-to-one, unless the nurse herself decides based on the acuity of the patients that she can handle two and that okay. she can take care of two. That's the absolute maximum number of patients an intensive care unit nurse would have. However, in my situation, I'm working in the emergency department, I can have a patient come in, a trauma patient, patient that was in cardiac arrest that we got back, mm -hmm. that is an intensive care unit patient, needs one-to-one -one nursing care, but I'm expected to take care of that patient plus three or four others until that wow. patient goes to the unit. It's impossible. You can't do it and give good care. Right. So somebody suffers for it. So I haven't been to the emergency room often. When I was a kid, the middle of the night, I have asthma. My mom would rush me over there. So that's all my, and, or when I was there with my dad. But you could have one person in this room having one issue, maybe an asthma issue. But you could have someone else with much more critical issues. And you could have two or three. Who makes the decision what patients get, get what nurses in the emergency room? As the, the patients come in, it's basically as they're brought into a room, a nurse is assigned to them. Oh. Um, the charge nurse in the emergency department tries to control the flow of these patients, right. tries her hardest to make sure that one nurse isn't getting overwhelmed. But when you don't have enough nurses, you end up with no choices. Right. So one nurse can have a person having a heart attack, a person having a stroke, a person there with severe abdominal pain, a child with a high fever that came in having had seized at home. Right. You can have all these patients all at the same time. It's not possible to give them good care all at the same time. We need more nurses. So what dictates this now? What dictates um, how many patients to a nurse in, in any given hospital? There is nothing. Okay. There so how do nothing. they staff so them? Administration staffs by budget. Oh. It's so when people say to me, because maybe we can go through some of the um, objections or the fear tactics that mm -hmm. are out there, and maybe some of them are realistic and maybe some of them aren't. But when people say to me, if you vote yes on one and we require safe patient limits, that means hospitals are going to close. So I'm not a medical person. I'm, I'm pretty expert in a lot of fields. Medical is not one of them, and I try my best um, to become more so, but I'm not a nurse. And so my response is, if the if the patient to nurse ratio is in a safe amount and say my dad's going in there with a cardiac issue and he's not getting the service that he needs and something bad happens to him or he dies, maybe that it's all right that that hospital closes. And I don't know from a nurse's perspective, if, and, and maybe my dad would go to a different hospital that's, that's managed better, wouldn't get better care. How, do you... What do you say to people that so, when they say the hospital is going to close? When they say the hospital is going to close, um, that's a deceptive practice being used to convince people to scare people. Right. Um, unfortunately, the opposition, instead of coming out with their own plan with how things would work and how they could improve patient care, instead they're using deceptive practices, right. out and out lying at times, just to scare people so they'll vote no, they're very so they scared. can continue to running things the way they have. The proof in the pudding is the state of California. Mm -hmm. California enacted these safe patient limits 14 years ago. Wow. Okay. No hospital in California has closed due to safe patient limits. No person has lost their job due to safe patient limits. The quality of care has increased. And the cost of um, health care in California has decreased. Is that because there aren't readmissions or? It's because there aren't readmissions, there aren't bad outcomes, there aren't medical errors, they're getting the proper care. Oh, the you lawsuits. have the nurses in there. Exactly. Lawsuits come you from don't medical have, errors. You don't have any of that going on. So the actual, they have found that employers' health um, care premiums, health insurance premiums, have decreased. Wow. Employees' premiums have decreased. 
because care is better managed. It's better quality care. I work with um, travel nurses. These are the nurses that travel the country. Hospitals hire them on when they're short and they can't um, get permanent nurses or they're not looking for permanent mm -hmm. nurses. And I've talked to some of these travel nurses who have worked in California and they much prefer to work in California because they say the working conditions are better. You can give better care to your patients. You have more time with your patients. So you don't go home at the end of the day thinking to yourself, and lots of nurses do, go home at the end of the day, did I miss something? Right. Did I not get something done? Did a patient suffer because I couldn't do what I needed to do? It's sad when you walk out of the building at the end of your shift and say, oh, thank God everybody's still breathing. It is That's sad. That's not how you should be functioning. It's not how you should be working. It's not how you should be feeling when you go home at the end of the day. You should go home at the end of the day feeling, my patients got everything they needed. I had the time to spend with them. I had the time to spend with their families. A lot of these families need the comfort and the care that the oh, patients yeah. need. They also need the education. You're taking mom home. You need to know how to take care of mom when she gets home. That's so true. And we don't have time to do any of that. Yeah. I'm lucky to have my mother because she's very experienced in medical. She was a CNA. So, mm -hmm. so when my dad was passing, we didn't really need that much help because she was such a, a good leader in that area. But I imagine when you're in these critical p positions, you really do need education. You need the education. Because if it was and me we don't, and my siblings, and we don't have the time for it. So yeah. the, the, the scare tactic that they're using that the hospital's going to close is untrue. Um, one of the newest commercials I've seen coming out from the opposition, which I just find deplorable, is when they have an ER doctor saying that they're going to limit I just how many that. patients can be seen in an ER. So he's obviously not aware of what the MTALA laws are. What's MTALA? Okay, the MTALA laws um, are, were put into place to make sure that nobody was ever refused care at a hospital. Right. You cannot turn a patient away from uh, ER in a hospital. You cannot refuse them care. It's the law. So when I saw that commercial, I thought that was absolutely deplorable, that they would be scaring people to the fact that saying, if you vote yes on this, you're going to get turned away at an ER. I saw That's that commercial yesterday, and I had someone two days ago say that to me. And they said, well, if you don't vote no, uh, if, you vote, if you vote yes, that means if you need help at an emergency room and they already have too many people, you're going to be turned away. So, what, so say these safe patient limits came in, everybody voted mm -hmm. yes, as we advised them to do. Um, and you, I don't know, what's the safe patient limit for ERs? So it, it depends okay. um, what type of patient you're taking care of in the ER. As I said, if, if you've got a trauma patient that just came in, it would be a one-on-one. -on -one. Right. You wouldn't have any other patients. You'd just be taking care of that trauma patient. Um, there are different, they called ESI levels. Um, when a patient comes in, depending on their acuity, what their level is, um, and what the amount of care is that they need, and how many patients of that level care a nurse could take care of. If it was a patient, say, for instance, could have gone to their doctor's office for the care that they right. needed, you could take care of four of those patients easily. Right. Um, if they're a little sicker than that, require CAT scans, IVs, lots of medications, three of them. Okay. And if it was an acutely ill patient, you might be down to just two patients that you could take care of. So when they say that, well, well there's going to be longer waits, we're not going to be able to take care of patients, it's not true. You're going to have more nurses in the emergency department. You'll have more nurses to take care of the patients. So when in fact, the wait times, as proven in California, are shorter. Oh. You're actually seeing faster. So if there was a natural disaster, because this is another one I heard, mm -hmm. or some kind of terrible shooting of multiple people, or some kind of a terrible incident, maybe a bus goes Let's off. Take the Boston Marathon, for yeah. instance, what happened there. So there is a caveat in this ballot question that states that if a federal or state the federal government or the state to declare an emergency if there's a disaster, that the limits can be suspended. Okay. Okay. And put into that is you will never see a nurse walk out the door. Right. Nobody ever does. Right. The Boston Marathon, nurses heard that on the TV, on the radio. They got in their scrubs. I and know. they drove to their hospitals without even receiving a phone call it gives to say, me please chills. come in. Yeah. Nurses go. They do. There are disaster plans with each hospital. We get phone calls. You get in your car and you go. Right. Um, if you know, you're due to go off shift and a disaster's happened, nurses don't walk out. They don't leave. 
So that's not going to be a problem. That's not going to change how things are done now. So, and it is specifically written into the law. Disaster so when occurs. I was um, in college, we did, I was in a sorority, did philanthropy and stuff. And one of the things we did was like we pretended to be in this natural disaster to go mm -hmm. into the hospital, see how they react. And um, it was like the setup was we were like 50 kids on a deck and it was a party and the, and the deck, collapsed. deck collapsed, right? So... I don't know if a mayor would call 50 kids in issue a disaster, or would they? I mean, how would you, what defines well, a disaster? Well, I, I think that the, the, the mayor, you know, uh, I don't know what their criteria are, right. but if we had 50 possible patients coming into the emergency department, we have disaster plans within our own hospitals. Okay. And that you go into that, that mode, and those phone calls are made to nurses who aren't working at the time asking them to please come in. So you would be doing that anyway. So we'd be doing it anyways. Oh, okay. So when they say that you would be turned away, that is not accurate. No. What are some of the other negative things you've heard? Are those the two big ones? Those are two, two of the big ones is that they'll close the hospitals and, and um, that you'll get turned away in the ER. The other one is that... that it's taking the decisions out of the nurse's hands. I was going to say that one. What this actually does is put the decision into the nurse's hands. Okay. It gives us finally the right to say, no, I can't take more care of more than these particular three patients. They are at this level of illness that I need to have the time to be able to take care of them. I can't take on patient four, five, and six. It gives us the right to make the determination. And they've got to build what we call an acuity tool so that there are criteria in order to state how sick a patient is and how um, many of those patients the nurse would be able to take mm -hmm. care of. Um, one of the other problems that they're very concerned about um, that they're going is they're saying that the hospitals are going to be fined if they violate these limits. Um, that does not start immediately upon the passage of this ballot question. Um, they're all concerned January 2nd, they're going to start hitting the hospitals with all these fines. Not true. This piece then has to go before the Health Policy Commission. They have to evaluate all that. They have to decide what incident deserves what. And the fines range anywhere from a dollar up to $25,000. None of that's going to go into place immediately. That all has to be worked out. I would assume a $25,000 fine would be a big issue. Yes. What kind of issue might bring a twenty-five thousand? Well, I would I would think if if you know uh, in say the emergency department where I know if you expect the nurse to take care of two trauma patients at the exact same moment in time, right? Because someone could die. People will die. That's scary. And do you think Do you think some hospitals do that? They they push this bottom line to get as much money. I what happens with hospitals is they don't staff us. And then when you don't have enough nurses and you're calling your nurse manager, or you're calling the nursing supervisor and you're saying, you know, there's supposed to be nine of us here and there's six of us. And they'll say to you, I have nobody to send. Do the best you can. Wow. We've been listening to that my entire career. Do the best you can. Well, nurses do the best they can every single day. That's right. And we're telling you that we've reached our limit on you not supplying the patients with the correct quality care that they deserve. Right, and these are our family members. We want exactly. to make sure that they get good care and not worry so much about um, the executives, though I care about the executives too because they provide a very important function. But it sounds like your argument is fair and I can't even believe it doesn't exist already. Health, to us, health care is not a business. Right. Health care is a right. It's a human right. It's not a business. We understand there are costs. We understand you have to budget. But hospital executives are making choices of where they're putting the money. And we don't feel they're putting the money where it belongs, mm -hmm. and it belongs in patient okay. care. Now, are all hospitals on this um, question the ones that are um, maybe better financed than maybe other ones? Um, are they all being held to the same standard if this is a yes vote? They'll all be held to the same limits, okay. yes. And it, has there been any studies done on how much more it's going to cost? Because I think that's another... One, there was a study that recently came out um, that because uh, the hospital executives are saying that it's going to be $1.4 billion, and it's not. Um, the most recent study that came out said across the entire Commonwealth for all hospitals to reach the correct staffing levels, it would cost $47 million. All right. 
Some hospitals are better staffed now than others. The ICU is, uh, law is already in place, so those units are already staffed for that level. Mm -hmm. They have found that the maternity units across the straight state are, are pretty well staffed. Um, so it's not every hospital, every floor. Some hospitals are better staffed than others. But across the board, the last study is saying 47 million for all of the hospitals to come up to the correct level. Well, so someone at home might say, oh, 47 million, so much money. Be but it's, so much money, you have to put but it in perspective. You have to put it in perspective. It's across the entire Commonwealth. You have to put it in perspective what these CEOs, some of them, are right. making anywhere from one to three million dollars a year. Right, that's the key. Um, if you right. look at partners just built a brand new administrative building in Somerville, $465 million on a building. So we're right. talking $47 million right. to, to properly staff and save lives versus what they're spending, where they're spending it, and the choices they're making. And yeah. we think they need to make better choices. Right. Well, I don't want to throw this at you, but do you know how much the mass is spent on, like, across the state when they say $47 million more? It, what's the total? I don't know. Yeah, because I bet the $47 million would be a very small percentage of the overall cost that's yeah. spent all the way across the state. That doesn't seem like a lot of money to me. When, I mean, it's a lot of money to me personally. Right, but, right. but when you industry, look at the number of hospitals, acute care hospitals across the state, mm -hmm. what health care, the cost of health care is, right. it's a small proportion. Wow. So we're yes on one here at this yes table, on one. right? Yes. How are you feeling about... Um, the results on this? Is it polling well? How are people responding? The last results I heard were pretty much even for yeses and nos because there is so much confusion out there right now. And we're going, you know, neighborhood to neighborhood. We're canvassing. We're talking to people. We're getting out there to explain what's going on and to give them the correct information so that they can make an informed decision. Right. So I'm a yes on one. I have a, I have a sign on my lawn that says yes on one. And sometimes I drive around. There are a lot of yes on one signs in this mm -hmm. district um, in Brockton, West Bridgewater, and East Bridgewater. But sometimes I take a double take because it actually says the alternate side. And the signs look very similar. Right. The opposition is mimicking our signs in order to create even more confusion. Oh, so they're very smart. I mean, you so know, they're being you don't very become... deceptive. They've spent millions, millions, I think they're up to around nine million dollars or so now or more in order to, to fight this. Well, I think that nine million dollar could have gone into a better places like hiring nurses for safe staffing. Right, I know. And, and the other concern people have, they say, well, they say there's a shortage of nurses. There's no shortage of nurses out there. What there is is a shortage of nurses willing to work in bad working conditions. Right. So we've had a lot of nurses who have left and walked away because they won't work under those conditions. Massachusetts actually has more nurses per capita than any other state in this country. Wow. We have about 3,500 nursing students that graduate each year. I know a couple that worked as techs at my hospital that graduated in June still have not been able to find a job. Most of the hospitals are only offering part-time jobs. People need full-time jobs with oh, benefits yeah. in order to um, survive raise family, and right. raise their family and in order to pay back their student debt. Right. Nurses walk out of four-year colleges just like everybody else with just as big a debt. Or more. And they need um, a full-time job. Hospitals, again, like other businesses, part-time jobs only in order to cut their costs. Wow. So the nurses are there. That's not the problem. Are you seeing the ratios? Are they worse in urban low-income centers um, or working class centers like Brockton? Or um, is there a certain place or is it, is it determinant by that? It's, it's pretty much across the board. Really? Um, there are some hospitals better staffed than others, but as like I said, this has been my entire career, this battle. 36 of, years. 36 years of having too many patients to take care of at the same time. You know, in so many ways I tell people that, yeah, we have to let the market decide because I'm a, I'm a believer in capitalism, but government is there to make sure that we regulate industry because if we don't, you know, capitalism this, this plays. Is, this is right. human life. Right. And when you look at some of the things that are regulated and not regulated, now a daycare teacher has a maximum number of children she's allowed to take care of. Mm -hmm. That's regulated. But you can take all those children, they become ill, put them in a hospital, 
and there's no limit on the nurse on how many ill children she's taking care of. Where's the sense in that? And so that point should be driven home to the people at home that are even considering not, you know, supporting this ballot question. I mean, we're yes on one, yes on one, mm -hmm. but it, that is really interesting. Daycares have these patient, these kid to kid person ratios, ratios, but hospitals wouldn't. But hospitals don't. So you can give as many sick children to one nurse to take care of as the administration wants. Wow. And yet, if you go to a daycare where there are healthy children, they're limited on how many children they take care of at one so time. So that really drives it home to me, and it makes me understand why a nurse, if they were confronted with this type of um, setup, might say, okay, I can't even work here, because you're whole, you get into nur nursing to help people. Right. And you go home and you feel like, I'm doing my best, but I can't help these patients. Like you've not done what you needed to do. Uh -huh. And a lot of people, I tell them, do the simple math. Sometimes that's easier for people. If I'm working an eight-hour day and I have six patients, that means each patient, maximum time they get from me is an hour and 20 minutes in that eight-hour period of time. That's wow. the maximum amount of time they get for everything that they need. And if one of those six patients is sicker than the others, they're going to get more time, and the other patients are going to get less. I go down to four patients, now it's two hours. So you've increased the time I have for each and every one of those patients. And with the flexibility of my saying, I have one that's really ill, so you need to cut me to three patients. And another nurse who has three patients that says, you know, mine are in good, pretty good condition, I can pick up that fourth. So it gives us the flexibility and ability to, to maneuver that around. But when you look at just the simple math of it, eight hour shift, six patients, that's one hour and 20 minutes. Wow. That's not a lot of time to do everything you need to do for a person no, who is ill. No, you have in and out, changing IVs like you said. And that includes all your documentation. So that includes time that you're not at the bedside, the time mm -hmm. that you have to document everything, review all the orders, get all the medications. So you've got to take that piece out. So now you might be down to just an hour's time in eight hours, that and they're that actually part, seeing you in the room taking care of them. And that part is very critical because if you, first off, the insurance now requires a lot of documentation, don't they? That's not on our, our part. I'm talking on nurses' notes and the oh, medications, okay. that to type. To make sure everybody knows what they're <laughs> on and nothing right. goes it's, bad. Exactly. And so if you don't have that time, is that where we're seeing these mistakes? And That's then, where you're seeing mistakes. That's where you're seeing complications. That's where, you know, if you have elderly patients, they need to go to the bathroom. If you can't get into that room, as soon as they hit the bell, they'll decide they're going to get up on their own. Oh. That's when you have falls. That's when you have um, more injuries, head injuries, fractured hips, oh my because gosh. you couldn't get in there fast fractured enough. Fractured hip, that could be life or death for some of these exactly. citizens. Right. It, it can change the quality of life forever. Well, Linda, I have to say I'm really thankful that you come, you came here today, and I really hope everybody at home can watch and get a better understanding of question one and why it's so important for all of us to vote yes. Um, I know that some people are having really f serious fights between each other, and just recently I was at a restaurant and I met a couple, and the husband was a nurse, and he was yes on one, and the wife was a nurse, and she wasn't. And, it, and he always said it's because she was in management, but they still love each other. But I'm seeing a lot of people get really into this because everyone's so afraid that their health care is going to be diminished. And I hope that um, some of the negative tactics that the executives and the other side are putting out there have been answered for our public today mm -hmm. in that a yes on one means better health care. A yes on one means better health care, safer health care for everybody. Um, I just find it very sad that the opposition, instead of coming out with this is our plan, this is how we work it, instead they're using lies and deception and fear to try to make people vote a certain way. So I say to people when the uh, booklet comes out, please read through it thoroughly. If you have any questions, you know, feel free to go online, talk to the Mass Nurses Association. All the studies are there for you to be able to review. You can get them online, the ones that have done across the country. California proves the point that it, it can be yeah. done, it works, right. people get better care, lower health costs. Thank you, Linda. That's the way you should go. You are so helpful and so passionate, and we're out of time. Oh. So thank, thank, you thank you for having for me. Your time. Thank you all for watching, and I hope that this is a good education for everybody at home.